Hello and welcome to the eighth video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about text. Please note I am using AutoCAD 2015 and as such there will be visual differences on your screen if you don't have AutoCAD 2015 as well. Uh, with that out of the way let's go ahead and get cranking here on this. First I want to go ahead and introduce you to two kinds of text and there are the two main kinds of text from which all text in AutoCAD is, is derived. So in order to do that, we go up here to the text um, button here on the home tab. You can see we've got multi-line text and single line text. We're gonna start with single line text. Single line text does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you draw text in a single line. And this is done by picking a, an insertion point, specifying a height, which you can do by, by clicking on between two points or you can just key it in. Let's say we want our, height, our text to be three inches high and specifying the angle of rotation that we'd like our text to come in on. And uh, I'm going to say that we want that to go left to right. So we'll just go ahead and select like that. And you can see our text option comes in here and we can start typing. So we can type something like, let's say that we're doing uh, outlets on a floor plan. We can say plus 42 AFF, above finished floor. And we, when you click again, it's going to jump out of that and, and make like you're doing another one here. So we can say, uh, Dishwasher, dishwasher. There we go. And um, a quick way to get out of these commands and a lot of commands, closing dialog boxes and a lot of other stuff in AutoCAD is holding on the control key and pressing enter on your keyboard really quickly terminates the command and closes the dialogs. So we've got these two different options, these two different uh, pieces of text here. And um, and and they're great. They're wonderful. You know, we can we can do all sorts of wonderful things with them here. Um, let's say that we're working in isometric, in an isometric view. We can come over here to properties. We can say we want these to be rotated 30 degrees, and then you scroll down here and you can say we want these also to be obliqued 30, and you know it comes out all spiffy looking like it's on the side of something. And you can do this for for isometric drawings, um, and this is an option that's only available in in uh, in this way from the properties dialog in single line text, but it has some limitations. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna copy this over here. And let's say that we want this to be a stacked fraction. So we'll say we want to say one half, come on, 2%, oh, yeah, yeah, I turned off num lock. There we go, one half inch. There's nothing that we can do here that's going to stack that fraction in single line text. It just will not happen. In addition to that, you can't add special characters. So if, it's, if this is supposed to be 45 degrees, I mean, you've got no option here for degrees. Uh, your keyboard doesn't do it. Well, single line text doesn't do it. Contrast this with multi line text, which is available here. You go ahead and click on multi line text. And what this does is, again, it lets you pick an insertion point, but it lets you select a bounding box and a width, maximum width that your text, text is going to go. So let's say we want our text to only go that far here. And we want our text to say, uh, let's, let's say uh, we want it to be a stacked fraction. So we say one half and space and it automatically will stack it for you. And it will give you this little lightning bolt thing here. If you've used Microsoft Office, you've probably seen this a whole bunch. Um, it means that there's uh, something that happened automatically, but you can change the behavior of it. So in this case, it's stacked the, the fraction as a horizontal fraction, or you can change it to be diagonal, or you can turn it off, or you can bring up this dialog here, which if you're using an older version of AutoCAD, is probably the dialog that you're going to be seeing because it, uh, at least 2014, I don't believe, did this. So I think this is a new thing, 2015, to have this little lightning bolt dialogue. You can also do special characters. So if you go up here to the top, you've got the option here for symbols. And you can say, oh, well, I want to actually do a plus or minus sign. Or I want to have a diameter symbol. Um, so let's say we want to have half inch diameter and here and you can go down another line we can say 45 degrees we got the degree symbol um and that, that's all available in multi-line text and again you can see here the difference you if you go to edit this by double clicking on your text um, you'll notice that you get this whole text editor tab that comes up 
Whereas this gets absolutely jack squat. It's just, um, it's exactly what it is. If you if you can't type it on your keyboard, it can't be done in, in single line text. Um, so that being said, we talked about stacked fractions. We talked about the differences between M text and single line text. Um, let's go ahead and talk about column control in your text here. So let's say that you've got a whole bunch of text. I'm going to go ahead and just copy the script, my opening script here. Every, it's the man behind the curtain. I, I have a little spiel that I say every time you've probably noticed. And, uh, and this is it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do a multi-line text here. And I'm going to specify space that it's going to live in. And we'll go ahead and just paste it here. And you'll notice that it comes in in a single column. Uh, but let's say we don't want it to come in, in a single column. By default, um, AutoCAD has what's called dynamic columns turned on, and you can modify this per object, right? Um, you can say how how big you want that to be, or how small you want it to be, or, or whatever. You can also modify that on the fly with a handle right here. So you can see here we've got this handle. We can go ahead and pull that out. And again, be careful because handles will still snap to other objects. So if you wind up clicking on something and it turns out to be crazy, um, just be aware that it's probably your snaps that are turned on. Um, so that's column column control. Um, one of the other things you can do here is again you can you can do any kind of text modification. I'm going to work on the assumption that you understand text modification, how to center things, how to do bullets, how to do um, bold or italicized or underlined things, or 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 what have you. Um, in another video, we're going to talk about text styles, so uh, you have permission to get excited in advance for that. The other big thing I wanted to talk about in here um, is this section up here. This is called the ruler, and you'll notice that on each column you have uh, a ruler. And the ruler is, I keep on saying this about every feature, it's probably the most important feature. <laughs> I love this. It's probably the most undervalued feature. How's that? Um, of multi-line text and it's the ability it gives you the ability to to do tab control on your drawing so let's say that for instance we want to um, have on a single line multiple different justifications of text now we're going to set up some tab formats so you'll notice here if you click on this button it gives you options to cycle through this here is called a left justified tab this is a center justified tab this is a right justified tab and I believe that's a, um, a hanging indent or an all justified tab. I can't remember. I never use this one, to be honest. Um, so let's go ahead and start by adding a left justified tab. And I'm just going to make sure that option is selected and click on the ruler where I'd like it to be positioned. And I'm going to add a center justified tab. And we're going to stick it here. Uh, stick it right there. That looks like a good place. And we'll do a right justified tab and put it right there. Let me show you how this works. What happens is when you press the tab key on your keyboard now, it's going to jump to that, that location. You'll see that's where exactly where my cursor is. And you're going to have that justification as well. So right now I'm left justified. I'm going to say A. If I press tab again, it will jump to the center tab. And now when I start typing, I'm going to be center justified. And now when I press tab again, I start typing, I'm right justified. And this pulls through to um, to new lines and all that stuff. Now you'll notice that it doesn't happen up here. And again, it's because formatting is line specific. So um, that's how it works. It works the same way in, in word processing software. So if you're familiar with uh, within word processing software, it functions the same way. You can also get to a dialog that gives you a little finer control. If you right click on the, rib uh, the ribbon, if you right click on the, uh, the ruler up top here and go to paragraph you can see here that you can you can specify which type you'd like and um and all that jazz where you'd like it to be you can specify indentation and all that wonderful stuff so this is a primitive way to be able to do tables incidentally um we're going to talk more about tables later but uh, be aware this this is one way you can do it um the last thing i wanted to show you here is what's called a background mask and this is uh, an option that lets you mask out uh, anything that's behind the text. So right now, let's say we've got some lines here. 
And that, I don't know why you'd ever have lines like that in a drawing, but I'm gonna go ahead and send these to the back. We go draw order, send to back. You can also type draw order on the command line and press B. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any difference now, but, but in fact, these two objects um, are stacked and the text is on top of the line. But um, let's say we don't want it to be that way. Let's say we want this to be blacked out behind the text so you can't see, uh, so, so you can see the text better. You don't have this interference of the line. Um, so it's not the, the, uh, the human test there, the capture human test. What you can do is you can select your text, go here to background mask, go, click this little button here, and check that you'd like to use a background mask. Now, these other two options here, three options effectively, this one here lets you pick the color of your background mask. If you don't want to pick a color and you want it to be the default color, you check that box. So if, you, if your background mask comes out a crazy color, probably red, it's because you didn't check that box. The other thing you need to do is specify the size of the, of the border. Um, and so what you can do is type in, you know, one point something. I always like to do 1.1 because it's small enough that um, that it doesn't really interfere with your drawing a whole lot, but it's big enough that it gives you just a little bit of a buffer. Different people like different sizes. And you'll notice here that, in fact, these, these lines are not gone. They're just masked out. Um, so that's a background mask. At this point, you should be able to do single line text, multi-line text, stacked fractions, special characters, background masks, isometric text. And we showed you a little bit about that right here. Uh, you can do that in multi-line text as well. Let's say we want to rotate this. Um, so we want to rotate that 30 degrees. You'll notice it comes up 30 degrees and you can selectively um, change the, the way that it's shifted here by going up to the formatting option and change your obliquing right here. So let's say we want that to be another 30 degrees. Uh, you'll notice that that, I mean, because it's, because of the way the columns are set up, it looks kind of funny, but but uh, that now has reads the same as, as this right here. Um, and again, obliquing works on, uh, generally when you're doing isometric drawings, it works on 30 degree angles, so. Uh, you should be able to do columns and manage your columns and change the size of your columns. Remember, you can do that right here, um, or you can modify the columns here in properties. Under, um, or you can turn them off altogether. There are like I've got a coworker who loathes columns; she can't stand them, so she always turns them off. Um, and you should be able to format things with tabs, like what we did with right here. And again, remember, tab formatting is something that's only available in mtext, as is special characters, stack fractions. That's about it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it was great, fantastic, life-changing, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time.